how to master email marketing. In this video, I'm going to teach you almost everything about email marketing and reveal the vital strategies you will need to grow a profitable email list. If you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything important. How do you master email marketing? This involves three simple steps. Number one, building an email list. And number two, sending valuable content to your email list. And three, maintaining a healthy email list. One, build an email list. There are many ideas out there about building an email list, but take my advice, never buy an email list. You know why? Buying an email list may lead to spamming, poor open rates. You may also get into trouble with the authorities if they find out that you are sending unsolicited messages to people. What should you do rather to get email subscriptions? Use lead magnets like 1. Giving a free ebook in exchange for potential client or customer's email address or 2. Doing a free webinar registration with email sign up as a criteria to attend the webinar or anything else of value that triggers someone to willingly release their email address. Of course, you should provide value before asking for email addresses. That's the simple trick. In most blogs or websites, pop-up forms are placed on the pages once a user spends some time on the website. A form pops up like boom, with the promise to give the website visitor something of value in exchange for their email addresses. You see this all the times. That is how people get email addresses. Sometimes, marketers create a squeeze page that serves as a landing page with a promise to give the visitor something of value, but they need to fill in their email or uh, best personal email address to be able to get the freebie. Alternatively, if you own an e-commerce business, make sure people opt into your email list before making the purchase. Why? It helps you to keep in touch with customers build a relationship with them and even remarket to them you know in the future but a double opt-in is even better this is more effective because it requires the user to put your first email in their email box to confirm their interest in being a part of your email list that's not all it allows you to filter fake opt-ins and train the email service provider to understand that your emails are not spam and should be delivered effectively the next step in learning how to master your email marketing is to know how to effectively maintain your email list. Maintaining a healthy email list simply means keeping a list of subscribers who are engaging regularly with your emails. The email algorithm uses an engagement ratio to decide whether your emails are spam or not. The engagement ratio describes the open rates you get whenever you send emails. The more you send emails that never get open, the more likely email service providers will categorize your email as spam. A good practice is to scrub your email list and remove subscribers who never open your emails in the last three to six months. That's the rule of thumb. This allows you to keep only subscribers who are regularly engaging with your communication. And those are the kind of people who are the right fit for your business. You know why? If they are engaging with your emails, then they are interested in your topic and they are likely to take the specific actions that you want them to take. These actions could be to click on links to your blog post, to, read your, to watch your YouTube videos, affiliate offers, or buy your products or services. At the end of the day, keeping a healthy email list increases your return on investment. This is an important tip for you. Increasing your email return on investment is key. If you're managing your email list with email autoresponders like SendingBlue, ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign, GetResponse, or others, you should know that keeping an email list is expensive. So, you surely understand that keeping people's email addresses on their platform costs money. That's some kind of investment, right? You need to recoup your cost. You need to have a good return on investment. The good news is, the overall value of email deliverability is on the rise. In 2010, the Digital Marketing Association put the return on email marketing at $40 per every $1 spent. In 2019, the Digital Marketing Association reported an increase by 2% to $42 for every $1 spent. Why? It's simple. 
it's because of the increased use of segmentation in email marketing. So I think it will be important to talk about email marketing segmentation. This means dividing the email list into different groups so that you can send content specific emails of interest to people. Email marketing isn't just one size fits all. To increase your open rate, you should learn to understand that not everyone on your list will consume the same information at the same time and feel satisfied. That's why segmentation is important. Let's narrow it down to behavioral segmentation. This is a grouping done based on how the user previously interacted with your brand or content. These include things like new user opt-in, previous purchases, customer loyalty, frequently opened emails in a specific topic, and so on. These segments, with these segments, you can create trigger emails to attend to specific customer needs based on behaviors of the user. You know what? Studies reveal that email segmentation increases email engagement by 77%, and that's very huge. So segmentation is something you should think about. Now, let's talk about the, the need to send valuable emails. People receive tons of emails every day. Most people receive up to 200 emails per day. If you want to stand out and get your emails open fast, then you need to do what the masters of email marketing do to increase their email engagements. These few tips that we'll discuss here will help you. Tip number one, have a super clickbait title to increase your open rate. When it comes to emails, conveying value starts from the email subject line. This will determine whether the email will be opened or not. And that's true. But this shouldn't mean you should use a clickbait that eventually turns people off. The point is to use good headlines that will arouse curiosity the value of your email should be perceived from the subject line. 69% of spam reports come from subject lines. So be sure to use subject lines that won't take your email to the spam folder. And that's going to be horrible because nobody will read your emails. You keep sending emails and um, nobody's seeing them. So crafting great and highly converting email subject line requires good copywriting and content marketing skill set. That is why we have crafted carefully a copywriting ebook using our results, experience and recommendations from copywriting gurus. You can check the link below if you want the ebook to speed up your email marketing you know, skill. Another important tip, always split test your subject line. Split testing means testing variation of subject lines to know which one works best. Well, split testing works well for me. Many email autoresponders provide uh, the A-B testing or split testing future. But I use ConvertKit to test two subject lines with a small audience from my list. Once I get the best subject line, then I can send a broadcast using the winning subject line. Kindly make sure to keep a swap file of subject lines that have worked really well for you in the past. You know why? You may need them in the future. You can also use the pre-header. These are the first few words in your email that shows a preview in your inbox before anyone opens to read. The pre-header supports the main subject line. And the best subject lines are within 50 characters or less. These subject lines are mostly teasers, picking people to open an email and read. Just be sure that whatever you tease in your subject line actually delivers in the body of the email. Avoid deceptive clickbaits, as this will dent your brand reputation and lower future open rates. The next tip is to craft killer email copy. To do this, keep the text simple within the main points up front. Save the long form writing for your blog or your YouTube channel. It is all about them and not you, so you should write for your audience. Your email should always have a pay point or benefit for your audience. This is why they will keep reading your emails anyway. So personalize your conversations and don't be too formal or salesy with your emails. Think of your emails as a personal conversation with your friend. This way, your emails will be treated as real and even autoresponders or email service providers will not consider your emails as spam. You know what? If you try too hard to sell with your emails all the time, your emails will end up in the promotion tab or spam folder. Another tip would be to run your email through a spam test to check for punctuation, formatting, um, fonts, languaging, and other things that are spam free. This helps with deliverability of, of your emails. 
you should aim to get your emails delivered to the primary inbox and not the spam or junk folder or maybe the promotion staff because I know you don't like that. This is a really big tussle for everyone. Another tip would be to use email sequences. An email sequence is used for different purposes. One, to build a new relationship with maybe new subscribers who just opted to your email list and you give them a sequence of email that delivers to them every day until you eventually sell them something. Or you want to use another sequence to continue to build an attractive character while you keep selling to them in the future. So you want to sell to people without actually sounding salesy. No one wants to be sold to anyway. I hope you will find all these tips useful and step up your email marketing game. If you want to read all about how to master your email marketing, check the description below. I have a full blog post that teaches almost everything about email marketing.